Nisa. Hi, my name is Dr. Sid Solomon. Nice to meet you. Welcome to our office. Thank you. I appreciate taking the time coming to, to my uh, neck of a neighborhood. Tell me, tell me about yourself, why you're here, what brings you here. And I, I do understand that uh, you're here for a reason of some concern of pain and discomfort. And migraines that won't go away. Right. So I think when I was probably 13, I was diagnosed with TMJ and I had no idea what it was, but the orthodontist at the time gave me braces and then I ended up having braces again. And then so you had braces twice. Twice, and then by sixteen I was hit in a, a car drunk accident. driver yeah, car accident and broke my jaw. So at that point uh, the jaws were wired shut, and the first doctor who did them apparently did them wrong. So my teeth became even more messed up. So they had to be unwired and mm. then rewired. And ever since then, that was. 20 plus years ago, I've been in pain. So headaches on a regular basis. Um, and so Where do you get your time, headaches? Uh, the headaches are either on the right or the left. Okay. It's rarely ever both, but they rotate. Like one morning it'll be the right, the mm -hmm. whole right side. And then the next day it could be the left. I see. Uh, I see on your medical history, you're also complaining of TMJ issues. Do you have any concern or clicking or popping or pain on your face or when you open and close or even when you chew? I do and I think that it's been such a like normal part of my life mm. that I've just accepted it. But if you get down to the nitty gritty, yeah, if I open my mouth, there's always clicking and popping and there's always tightness and uh, and I think that it does contribute to the headache. So what have you done for the past 20 years about the situation that you have? I've done acupuncture, I've done chiropractic, I've gone to my regular doctor and he's prescribed uh, migraine medication, which I do not like to take. I've taken excessive Excedrin and Advil, which also I don't like to take. And I've exercised and just um, had massage and sort of just So you deal it. with it uh, day to day mm -hmm. and... Uh, you, you do the best you can. Yeah, and it's exhausting. Exhausting. Um, I must say, you are uh, at an age that obviously uh, you have a career, you want to uh, you know, live life to the maximum potential. And th is this something that it kind of bothers you at times that you're not in the mood to do anything or uh, sure. you rather stay home at times? For sure. Obviously, I understand from patients that they do get migraines or headaches they really don't want to deal with anyone and they want to sit home yeah, and you can't be in a dark light. room. Right, you can't have the light or the sound and honestly even with the medication sometimes you still can't quite function. So if you have to call in sick from work or I do, it's you know, it's not okay. So uh, miss, uh, miss social functions, not okay. Tell me, tell me about your ears, tell me about your um, TMJ, clicking, popping, any, anything around your uh, neck and face? Well, there's tightness in my neck always, so uh -huh. I feel like I'm, I have a weight over my head mm -hmm. always, like Feels bearing heavy. down on me, yeah. So if I could get that just released by 30%, I think mm -hmm. it would make me feel better. And then my ears started feeling like they were uh, plugged, I guess, um, in the last six months. And I thought it was due to having a cold, but it hasn't gone away. So I feel like I'm in an airplane. Wow. So uh, when you take medication, when you sit home, the episode will last you, what, half a day, a day before it... Uh, sometimes goes... the medication works and uh, sometimes it doesn't. And um, there was a period of seven days recently where I woke up with a migraine every day and... It was very ill. Wow. When was the last time you had some headaches? And oh, some... probably three days ago. <laughs> it hasn't been long, so, honestly. So, I see on your medical history, you've seen other doctors, you have a MD that takes care of you, and tell me, have you ever seen a neurologist or have you seen an ENT doctor regarding your ears? No. Okay. And uh, you mentioned here on your medical history that you have clicking, popping, uh, grinding, 
uh, headaches and definitely some stiffness around your neck and shoulders and uh, it also sometimes you get uh, throat ache yeah I thought that was itching. allergies I really did so if most this people is part of everyday, everyday life yeah I just really thought it was allergies you know uh, you have talked and touched about certain things that uh, it shows that some symptoms of someone who is suffering from uh, TMD, temporomandibular disorder. Okay. I'm going to ask you specific questions and these are 20 common symptoms that we may find in someone who is suffering from uh, TMD. And I'm going to ask you these questions. You answered some of them already, but I want to know the answer is either yes or no. And don't think about the reasoning of it. Just no gray zone. Okay. Just is either yes or no. And the questions, uh, like the first one I can ask you is, uh, do you get headaches? Have you ever had headaches? How often do you get headaches? Is it every day, every other day? Every... It's at least once a week. Once a week. not more. Sometimes they're several days in a row. Okay, so it's periodic and when it comes, you never know when it ends. Right, and I know I'll never go a month without one. Wow. Uh, do you have, do you feel TMJ pain? Uh, you know, the joint right next to your ear. Do you feel soreness or pain around that area? I honestly don't know anymore because it's been so long. So long. Um, I know it feels like there's always pressure. Mm -hmm. Do you hear any noise or clicking or popping when you open and chew? Yes. How about... Um, do you have any limited opening or closing on your jaw? Yes. You mentioned that you feel ear congestion sort of a feeling. Do you feel it in both ears or just one? I'd say both. Both? Yeah. Have you ever got um, vertigo or dizziness? When was the last time that happened? Yesterday. Really? <clears throat> How long does it last? Not long at all. Oh, a few but, seconds and it no, goes away. Sometimes it's a little uncomfortable okay. or embarrassing. How about uh, tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears? Have you ever experienced that? I have, but not on a regular. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. come often, but it may come and go and may not be around for a few months and then right. all of a sudden mm -hmm. it shows up. For sure. Okay, and have you ever had difficulty swallowing your saliva or your food? due to the tightness of throat or? Perhaps. Okay. Do you have any missing teeth or no. loose teeth? You have all your teeth. Mm -hmm. Great. When you had braces, did they pull out any teeth? No, when my jaws were unwired the second time, they removed my wisdom teeth or molars so I wouldn't have to go through that process again. So they did everything at the, the same wisdom time. teeth, is, all four of them are out. I guess so, yes. Okay. Do you think you are a clencher or broxer? Clench. Do you know the difference? No. Okay. So the clencher is something that we clench like this. And then broxism is something that we brox and move back oh, and forth. grinding through. them, maybe. Grinding, broxing. Well, I know that my teeth have gotten smaller. So Shorter. however that's happened, I don't really know. But I know You that could be both. Okay. Okay, you could be doing both. So, uh, yes to the bruxism, yes to the clenching. Usually people that have uh, TMJ disorder, they are a very good clencher. Okay? Tell me about your face. Do you have any facial tenderness or pain? There's always yeah. tension here, and uh, I have to remind myself throughout the day, especially yeah. when I'm on the computer or driving, uh, or it's particularly uh, stressful. I have to try to un unclench or unwind mm -hmm. or un whatever so does, I feel less pain. Does your job require talking a lot? It does. So Constantly. at the end of the day <laughs> do you jobs. really get tired of I'm exhausted. talking and yeah. And I, I mean I go from I go for twelve to fifteen hours straight and uh, mm. so by the time the night time comes I don't want to say a word. Good thing we have texting now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> T V <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Tell me about uh, your teeth. Do you feel sensitive to cold, hot? 
Can Occasionally, you? but not often. Can you have an ice cream? Can you? Yes. Okay. Uh, how about tenderness when you touch them? Uh, when not percussion. unless I've just tried to whiten them. But okay, other otherwise that, it's other no I'm sense. Okay, yeah. okay, good. Have you ever had difficulty chewing chewy food or chewing gum? Or do you stay away from it? Uh, I chew gum and I probably shouldn't. And I know every does time it hurt? I put it. No, it doesn't hurt, but I know it gets it's tired. not helping me. Not right? helping you. Okay. <laughs> but I think of it as exercise. Okay. We may have to teach you a different type <laughs> okay. of exercise. Uh, by the way, I understand uh, you are a trainer as well. Yeah. So you know the body, the, the physics, and, and the, uh, the mechanics right? of mm -hmm. uh, all, the, all, I... all the muscles. Okay, fantastic. Tell me about your neck. How is the mobility on your neck if you do not exercise? I'd say the mobility is, I'm not a doctor, but I'd say the mobility is okay um, compared to others. However, it's not... Range of motion. Yeah, it's not... Go ahead. It's can not necessarily where it could be because it's very tight on both sides. Can you show me the, uh, to the right? Okay, so you can only come to this, mm -hmm. not not right here, and then go Without to Without pain, I can't go any yeah. further. Yeah, okay. So, so, I think this way is better. A little bit better. All right. Uh, tell me about, do you know any postural issues? Any, um, yes. Anything with your back? Mm -hmm. I've had x-rays of the back. And? and the, uh, it does curve a little bit, and the, I guess there's a natural curve that's not happening anymore. So, mm -hmm. I don't know what pulled that out, but... Tight yeah. muscles is what they explained to me. We're definitely going to take a look at that. Have you ever had, uh, for no reason, tingling and numbing yes. of your fingertips? For sure. And it uh, goes in phases. And it stays with you? and Sometimes then Sometimes it... it'll stay for a week or two. Mm. Um, lately, not so much. But I will feel um, numbness and tingling in my hands when I wake up or throughout the day. And then uh, what do you do with I shake it out and go on with my day. You, you have toughened up for that, huh? Um, most people, when, when they get to the, the situation of numbing or tingling fingertips, the very first thing that comes to their mind is that hmm, maybe I have some heart issues because our heart is connected to our you know, left hand. I and would our... think nerve issues. That's what I thought, but yeah. from yeah. my neck. Okay, that's, that's because you're a right. trainer and you understand <laughs> yeah, body. Maybe. Okay, great. Do you know... If you have tried Gemini Neuralgia or you have no idea what that means? I don't believe that I've tried it at all. It doesn't sound familiar. Okay. Uh, if you don't know what it is, uh, good. You probably don't have it, but we're going to touch upon that uh, in, a, in just a few minutes. Okay. Tell me, have you ever had uh, twitching of the muscle of your eye go crazy for a time period of time and then it goes away? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes? I thought it was related to a stress or vitamin deficiency. Mm. That was Interesting. My, that was my theory. Thesis, yes. Okay. So tell me about your sleeping pattern. Uh, do you sleep? What sleep? Okay. <laughs> do you toss and turn? Do you wake up a few I times? Turn. I wake up probably four or five times a night. Wow. So you pretty much probably don't go to REM sleep so when you wake up you're still kind of tired my REM sleep I think happens between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. Mm. and I don't know any other time that it does happen but I, I know I'm always up. alert um, do you have any nervousness any anxiety of any, course. any feeling that you know you, you don't feel at ease of course Okay. Usually people that don't go to REM sleep and don't sleep uh, quite uh, comfortably, obviously the body is tired and uh, they become agitated and nervous and they, they become very easily um, uncomfortable. Wow. Uh, so, so most people, they go to different doctors and they, and they get prescribed different medications for calming the nervous system down and, and, and the whole thing. And, Pretty soon they become addicted to that I don't medication. I do want to be on anti-anything like that. Anti okay. Anxiety or... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Impressive. 16 out of 20 is uh, your score. An A? Uh, you do get an A in uh, temporomandibular disorder. 
segment, I want to show you why you have what you have and then educate you about it so you understand the mechanics and, and the whole understanding of behind why we are facing this situation. So once and for all, you have a better answer if someone tells you you have TMJ and you say, yes, I know why I have it. And then hopefully we can find a cure for it or a solution for this. Because in my book, if there's a problem, there must be a solution. And That's why I'm here. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad that you're here. And uh, let's talk about this. Uh, I'm going to show you this little guy. This guy uh, kind of presents you, your head, your neck, your teeth, your jaw. And I'm going to show you how everything is connected in here. This is the most simplest way that I can show my patients how uh, your TMJ is connected from head to your hips. Yikes. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to get real closer to you and I'm going to show you to my audience as well uh, how this uh, TMJ joint works. This uh, joint is called temporomandibular joint. Mm -hmm. In short, we call it TMJ. Okay? The function of this joint is only one thing. The function is to open and close our lower jaw. Just the lower jaw. Okay. This joint is one of the most unique joints in our body. Why? Because it's the only joint that is connected to another joint through one bone. Hmm. And this is our mandible lower jaw bone. You can't find that anywhere else in your body. Every joint is very separate. This is very identical functionality of this joint, my elbow joint. The function of this is to open and close. Open and close. The function of this joint is to open and close. So they do the same thing. However, if something happens to this joint on my elbow, it's not going to affect my other joint. Right. If something happens to this joint, it will affect this one for sure. So that's why when I broke my jaw, I broke both sides. Of course. Right. So because in reality, these two joints, they have to open and close at the same time simultaneously. So take a look right here. What do we have in our lower jaw. We have teeth, 14 teeth on the bottom, 14 teeth on the top. So they need to occlude and come together. These, these teeth, they have a sort of a harmony that they have to follow and they have to come into each other in a correct way. As soon as iatrogenically, meaning man-made, or due to trauma or surgery or any other type of movement, we start playing with the position of the teeth and shove them and push them in a different direction. Now, instead of teeth coming together in this angle, mm -hmm. they may come together in this angle, or they may come together in this angle. When this happens over a period of time, brain says, I don't like this. I'm gonna start making you clench, clench, grind, grind, until you get rid of these edges oh, of your teeth, so I can move freely to wherever I want. So symptom number one usually is grinding and clenching because brain says, I don't like it. But at the same token, when brain doesn't like it, it's gonna send some impulses right to your teeth and, and nerves. And it's sending message all the time. So your subconscious mind is always awake and that's why we can't go to REM sleep. So our brain is always thinking and working and, and sending messages. It's interesting. Now, one thing unique about this joint is that it's the most commonly used joint in our body. We use this joint on the average, if we don't talk too much, usually about 3,000 times a day. Wow. I don't think last time I use this joint 3,000 times a day. Even if I go to the gym and I do everything, it's probably a few hundred times and that's about it. So 3,000 times a day, teeth are coming together in a wrong direction. So now we have a malocclusion of the bite and ever so slightly, but most definitely in a matter of few years, 
it will change the position of this joint being exactly right in the center of this concavity now it moves ever so slightly further back into the posterior position mm. so now 15 20 degrees of change we're talking about maybe half a millimeter of movement not a whole lot of space so now the joint is in the different angle as well guess what's right behind the joint our ears so do you know the distance between here separation between the joint and the ears how thick or how much of a space there is no idea literally is as thin as this paper that's how much of a gap we have between our joint and our ear so if you put your fingers into your ears you can actually feel your joint so there's not much of a space right in here if the joint is now in a different position definitely it affects our ears right. what do we have in our ears we have our equilibrium our balance we have our hearing so everything that has to do with our vertigo, dizziness, tinnitus, hearing, lack of hearing, high pitched noises, everything that you explained in earlier today, it's happening within the ear. So most people, what they do, they feel like they have an infection or ear infection and they have to go do something. So they see an ENT doctor. The ENT doctor will take a look at the ears. They see inside, they say, mm, I don't see much. Maybe there's some wax. Maybe we need to clean it up. Maybe you need to get some antibiotic, but it's really not the ear that is causing the problem. So you learn to live with this issue time to time, maybe some even fainting issues, maybe some heavy dizziness or falling down, which is really a serious problem. But joint is not the only thing that is connected or uh, to, to our teeth and, and, and our jaw. We have muscles as well. Do you have any idea how many muscles we have in our face? This is, and something. We have a lot of muscles in our body, but mm -hmm. in face specifically, we have 42 different muscles. Oh, okay. okay, That is related to our talking, eating, chewing, smiling, laughing, crying, everything that we do. I, did, okay. I do remember now. Okay, <laughs> The face has got 42. Mm -hmm. I'm going to brush up on five important muscles that are connected somewhat to our TMJ and we use them every second, every time we open, we close, we swallow, we, we chew, we eat, we yawn. Every time we do that, we're using these muscles. So um, the very first muscle that is connected to our TMJ, it's this particular muscle, which we call it temporalis muscle. That's the temporal muscles on the side. So every time we clench, every time we chew, we kind of use this muscle for sure. There's another muscle that comes down and it goes this way to cover our face. And that's the muscle of mastication, our masseter muscle right here, right here. So every time I chew, every time I clench, I use the masseter muscle and I use the temporalis muscle. And it has to do with opening and closing of my joint and jaw. There are muscles that are connected to the back of the head, which goes to the angle of the ramus. And there's a muscle that comes right to our neck, goes behind the ramus and the joint, and it goes to our neck. Oh. This is our neck muscle, head muscle, temporalis, masseter. We have muscles that come to our face for our facial expression muscles right here in the front. And we have a muscle down in here called digastric muscle for opening and closing our jaw, yeah. which is connected to our neck muscle. So every single minute that we use our joint, or maybe I should say every second that we use our joint, these muscles are functioning. So due to the malposition of the teeth, due to the malposition of the joint, now this muscle is pulling and pushing this way, this one is pulling and pushing that way, and this one is pulling and pushing this way, so now there's a tug of war between muscle, joint, and teeth. Hmm. They're uncomfortable. They're fighting against who wants to be in a better position. And this cycle, vicious cycle, continues every single minute. Now, as if this wasn't compli complicated enough, God created cranial nerves. 
we have 12 cranial nerves in our body. Four of them happen to be right in this section. Okay, so let's review them quickly because we can see nerve that comes right below the TMJ goes down to our upper and lower teeth. It's trigeminal nerve, branch one, branch two. This is the nerve that when you go to do dentistry, they have to numb it in order to do filling, extraction, implants, whatever they need to do to your teeth, they have to numb this nerve and it comes right in the corner of your jaw joint. One branch goes to the top area and one branch goes to the bottom and it stops right in the middle. And then there's another one right on the other side. So this particular nerve is quite, quite important for our face, for um, sensation, uh, tingling, for uh, pain, and sometimes innervations of uh, teeth issues, but uh, some dentists may think that there's a toothache, or a patient can think that way, but it's really not a toothache. It's a nerve innervation issue. Uh, there's a nerve that comes right in front of the TMJ and it goes right to our eye. This is nerve number seven. That's the twitching? That's the one that if it gets uh, pinched, now twitching can happen or blurry vision or pain around the eyes. Uh, nerve number seven is very important in that sense that if uh, nerve number seven and five get really uncomfortable due to the malposition of the joint, now we could even have paralysis of half of the face. And this, is, this could be serious. Uh, most people go to doctors, to neurologists, to every single MRI, CAT scan, whatnot. They can't really find anything because it's really nothing wrong with the nerve. It is something else that is touching upon putting pressure against the nerve. Uh, one more nerve that goes behind the TMJ goes to our ear. That's nerve number nine. This is designed for our hearing. Uh, obviously, if that nerve gets pinched, now compression, uh, sensation of uh, high-pitched noises, or even lack of hearing can take place as we um, have issues with this nerve. One last nerve that comes below and behind the TMJ goes to our neck is nerve number 11. That this was on is, fire. This is on, for our neck, okay. and it goes uh, behind our back and neck. And as you know, there are shoulders and then uh, arms and your fingertips. Mm -hmm. So when this nerve gets uncomfortable, we could all the way feel it in our fingertips as tingling sensation and numbing. And that's exactly what you explained. Mm -hmm. So now we have nerve number five, seven, nine, and 11. One of those main uh, sort of innervations of uh, nerves that play a very, very important role in temporomandible disorder. What do we need to do? How do we get rid of this problem? How do we find a solution that now the muscle, the joint, the nerve, the teeth, the jaw joint, they're all in a happy place? Right. This phenomena is called neuromuscular dentistry. We as uh, neuromuscular dentists, we not only take a look at the teeth, but we look at the joint, we look at the muscles and the nerve innervations, and technically the whole head and neck all the way to your hips and your back and lower back. Because this TMJ, if it's in the wrong position, it can slowly but surely change the position of your head and neck. So the change takes place by going forward, okay? And it definitely tightens all the muscles of the head and neck. So now the range of motion becomes very limited. So these are the issues that you mentioned earlier, that the neck, you have some issues, the ears, the eyes, the teeth, the everything that you mentioned, it's right here. Now, 65 years ago, a doctor by the name of Dr. Jenkelson got really, really curious and smart about this and says, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to create this computer software that now I can measure the activity of your muscles, these muscles that we discussed. By the way, one thing that I want to mention is that, do you have any idea why we get headaches? Uh, not, not really. I'm going to clear you. that up for you. Okay. It is very simple, very easy. Have you ever seen an EKG of a heartbeat mm -hmm. in a monitor in the hospital mm -hmm. or in, a, in, in any setting? The, the, uh, the heartbeat diagram goes like beep, 
beep, beep, everything is normal, everything is quiet. If the muscle dies, it goes very flat and it's like beep, done. If the muscle goes crazy, maybe too much tension, maybe cardiac arrest in the case of a heart muscle or any other muscle, it has to work much faster in a higher frequency and much more of it. This area of hyperactivity on the muscle, uh, it's due to uh, tension around the muscles because the muscle is pulling and pushing in a different direction, now it has to work harder. Well, something has to pump this action potential as we call it. Do you know what that something is? It's an influx of blood rushing into the muscle. It could be this muscle, it could be that one, it could be this one, all right? So now when we have additional blood pumping in here to compensate for the hyperactivity of the muscle, that's how we get headaches. Mm. If you do not deprive yourself from drinking water and eating, mm. there's no reason why you should get headaches, okay? So if we get headaches on a continuous basis of every day or every week, that has to do with blood influx into the muscle, trying to compensate for the hard work. Now tension builds up, now I have headache. So that's why we get headaches in certain different muscles. Uh, as I was saying, now the computer software can calculate and see the muscle activity, which, which muscle is hyper, which one is not working hard, which one is working really, really hard, we can measure and see the TMJ, which is the joint. Mm -hmm. We can hear the clicking, the popping. We can measure the opening and closing. We can see so many things that with the naked eye, a doctor cannot see. So thanks to technology and to this uh, fabulous mentor that created this device, so now I can find the position of everything that is going on. So in other words, whatever you just said and whatever we found out, mm -hmm. now we can document it scientifically and make a note of it and have it in our system. But the beauty of it is we have a tensing machine or relaxation sort of a unit uh, uh, machine that we hook up to your joint. Uh, this unit machine that is called tensing unit, we connect to your TMJ right to the right and left and basically what it does, it relaxes the muscle of your jaw and it relaxes the joint. Technically speaking, if this is your joint and it's sitting in a concavity like this, people that have issues with the teeth and the bite and misalignment, usually the, the joint moves ever so slightly into the posterior position. Mm -hmm. This posterior position, it could be a tiny bit of a, maybe a half a millimeter, maybe a quarter of a millimeter, but it plays a very important role in the whole understanding of a bite and the way jaw and teeth come together. So the tensing unit, what it does, it relaxes this jaw and it takes about almost about an hour to release all the tension away and your brain starts to release some dopamine and endorphins. So it relaxes the entire muscles of your head and neck. These are the muscles that we talked about. So once that happens, your jaw actually goes up and down by itself without you controlling it. So it becomes like a very, very loose sort of an object. And that's exactly what we want. Meaning this jaw joint from the posterior position now comes to the normal position. How do I know that? I'm looking at all the muscles that are connected to the joint. So now the muscles are showing me that they're in a relaxed stage. I know that my computer is blinking at me and says, this is the correct position for the jaw joint of this particular patient. So if I capture that space between your upper lower teeth, now I have found the joint in a much more comfortable position for your jaw. Mm -hmm. Now, technically, the way you bite, it's called habitual bite. That's your bite. That's the way you bite every day. Now, my computer, my intention is to find a different bite with respect to your jaw joint and your teeth. And that second bite is called physiological bite. If I find that bite, this is the bite to happiness. 
This is where the muscle, the joint, the teeth come together in a fashion that the teeth are this way, the joint is in the right place, and the muscles are happy. So they don't have to work. Exactly. So they don't have to work hard. When I create muscle not working hard and being in a very isotonic level, blood pressure decreases, tension goes away. The first thing that happens, headaches go away within a day or two. And I become a nicer person. You become a nicer person. You can function better, Mm -hmm. sleep better, and feel better, obviously. Have more energy throughout the day. No medication, no injection, no surgery, no cutting, no drilling. We're not talking about anything. This is a very non-invasive method. That's nice. So, our technology here is fabulous because now scientifically we can measure the way your body is acting. We can definitely see what's going on and then find a better position for your teeth. Now we have to train the muscle and the joint and the teeth for about 90 days. Okay. But every week, you feel better and better. So the first week, usually, the headaches will go away. The second or third week, the neck position starts to get more comfortable, rotation and movement and mobility, and that tension is going to leave you alone. The, maybe the seven and eight and ninth week, the ear starts to open up and clear up. During all this time, as you get better and better, we need to allow that in our orthotic. So we need to adjust the orthotic a couple of times, maybe once the first two weeks, and the second time, uh, first month, and then the last one and the third month. How do you adjust it? You come in here, we take a look at your bite, we tense your bite, and we understand where are the dysfunctional uh, hitting, and we just adjust the orthotic, not your teeth, So this way, uh, you basically get more in tune and a better bite and more precise. So the orthotic is adjustable? Yes. It's removable. The only catch is that you have to wear this device 24-7. I always tell my patients, yes, I understand it's really difficult to eat with it. So I allow them to eat without it, brush it, clean it, put it back in. Technically speaking, you have to keep it in 24-7 but uh, you're allowed to just take it out very briefly for you know, a couple times a day to eat and function and then put it back. So you have your hygiene, you have your own teeth, you have your, you know, uh, your, your bite and everything. So if you start wearing the device, which I designed it in a way that there is no front to it, basically once you wear it, it's clear, it's almost invisible. So you can talk with it, walk with it, dance with it, work with it, sleep with it, and get better results every day. So it's all about finding the bite, finding the the position for the TMJ, and retrain and regroup the muscles and the joint to go into the better position. And then wear the device forever? No, you wear it for about 90 days. So what happens, now we have trained the muscles and the joint and everything to be in a better position. Got it. Some of my patients, they go through this and then they say, okay, doc, I'm feeling a lot better. What should I do next? Mm. And I say, now slowly reduce the days okay. and just go at night and wear that night as a maintenance. If you don't have any issues during the day, that means, hey, we have retrained the muscles and the joint and everything, but we have not moved or changed or touched the teeth yet. So this is just a preliminary phase one to understand that can we get rid of the symptoms without even attempting to touching your teeth for the third or fourth time. So now what we're doing is basically retraining and regrouping. If you are in no pain, no complaint, we're good. You don't have to do anything. But if you remove it during the day and in a few hours the pain comes back and you say, "Uh oh, I'd rather have this in my mouth rather than not in my mouth. Now I would say your body is asking to go to phase two, which means now we need to move your teeth or reconstruct your teeth into that position that we found permanently. So if we do that, now you're completely cured for the rest of your life. Do you understand how this works? Uh, It's making more and more sense, yes. Okay, so it's basically finding the position, retraining the muscles and the joint, and now finding and see how your body reacts. At this point, all I want to show 
my audience is that how your other muscles are working which is causing all these problems first of all I can see that the masseter muscle when you clench for me go ahead and clench is quite enlarged and it's pretty much substantially bigger than let's say my masseter and what happens is this if the muscle starts to work really excessively just like this muscle it's gonna pump up so this is pumping up really nicely a lot Thank of people you. a lot of people uh, when they have that intense bite this muscle develops there are many different ways aesthetically we can reduce it maybe even using some Botox therapy at, at some point therapeutic Botox to reduce the inflammation and the size of the masseter this is another muscle right here when we clench it also works or overworks so the temporalis the masseter and definitely the neck muscle but one thing that most commonly happens between all these muscles to have issues is the neck muscle right here there's always tension always always here is tense and because it comes from the neck but also the headache can happen right on the if you notice right on the splenus capitis right this muscle is always tender and tight that's the base of your that's the base of your neck and your skull so these muscles are all connected and believe it or not once the muscle starts to hurt in here it goes to your shoulders oh, sure. trapezius muscle and then it goes to your lower back and then now we have also uh, backache okay. so you have to understand the position of the TMJ controls so much in our head no that it can affect anything from your head to your hips but some patients they really do have feet issues uh, they either had high arch or they have uh, maybe flat or they don't walk properly so now they develop a problem coming from their feet into their hips and now the TMJ causing problem from the TMJ to the hip so now we have a ascending and descending issues that we need to correct so what do we do we get orthotic for the feet we get orthotic for the mouth so now we're aligned and we're probably uh, pro very much indeed we're in a better alignment than before once we correct the alignment of your body and your head and neck things are gonna be much much better tension goes away headache goes away earache goes away and definitely clenching and grinding do you understand the whole phenomenon now I do it's all connected is that something that you've never heard from any other doctors that or physicians correct. or I've chiropractors that, that you've attended I've never heard that explanation it's really Quite interesting actually. did that did that solve the mystery of pain puzzle for I mean, you I just didn't know everything was connected like that especially the sleep and day-to-day uh, -day pain that I've been experiencing I had no idea well I'm glad that uh, you came in I'm glad that we had this talk this was very informative yeah, and educational thank you so thank much you so for much. taking the time coming over and uh, telling or showing our other patients that you know you're not alone there are, uh, there are over uh, millions and millions of people that are suffering from the temperamental disorder, but everyone uh, sort of have different issues. Some people have more nerve issues than others, some people have headache issues, and uh, some other people have only clicking and popping and they think, ah, oh, you know, this is the way I have to live. But there's no reason or no way that you should suffer in life, at, especially at this age. Yeah. If you were... 70 80 years old i understand everything wear and tear arthritis of the joint and problems but at age 20 30 40 there should be really no issue with pain and i hate to tell you that uh, medication and physical therapy and everything uh, works but momentarily and it really is not the treatment of choice yeah getting to the root of the problem is has always been my uh, want and need so. exactly so this is exactly the point I'm going to leave you with this one idea behind is that instead of looking for symptoms and and trying to uh, cure the symptoms uh, we really go for the problem the source of the problem which is the temporomandible joint once we alleviate the problem from the joint the symptoms they get fixed on their own and and, and it will leave you alone so this is a fabulous, fabulous, non-invasive method of, of treating someone with all these issues and problems. So the very last question you should have from me is this. Uh, what's, the, 
what's the best case scenario, what's the worst case scenario, right? Yeah, yeah. or what's the next step? step? Let me tell you about the best case scenario. I can probably get rid of uh, all your issues of head and neck and all your muscles and especially your headaches, 100%. If I can do that, I'm a hero, you're a fantastic patient, we're, we're, we're friends forever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the worst case scenario, it could happen, is that I can get rid of only 50% of your issues, not 100%. Maybe I can uh, lower the frequency of the headaches, maybe I can lower the frequency of the, the tension, ringing and honestly, tension. that would still be so good for me. So even if I can reduce things by 50%, non-invasively, non-surgically, it, be, it should be an totally amazing happy. result. So there's nothing that I can do is a permanent damage to you. Mm -hmm. If everything I do, it's definitely plus, and it's, we owe it to the, to the science of, of the technology that we have. And I have been blessed to do this for the past 15 years with so many, so many thousands of patients that I have tried to help out. And um, not only I have uh, dear patients and friends, but they're, they're, they, we really understand each other that once I get people out of pain, uh, I guess they love me to death. <laughs> so um, I want to thank you for your time. You. I appreciate my audience and uh, uh, hope to see you soon. Of We're course. definitely going to work on the next phase, which is making the device for you and uh, connecting you to the computer and finding where is your bite and where is your physiological bite. Thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you.